Can we start with the salawat, please? Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad wa ajil faraja. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. All right, so we're going to start with Jumu'ah first, because you still got, I um, don't know, an hour and a bit? Aren't you counting? You're supposed to be counting. No? So it's about 4.51 now, am I right? Yeah, 4.55, I don't know. Okay, when's iftar? You should know that. What's the time for? 6.21. Six minutes. Okay, so 6.21, which gives you about an hour and a half. Well, not an hour, no, an hour and 20 minutes. Surat al-Jumu'ah. If you haven't recited it at Fajr, in your Fajr Salah, now, as in now, as in when we're done, okay? Um, Surat al-Rahman, Surat al-Kahaf, if you haven't done it, okay, that's okay. Salawat, as many times as possible. Surat al-Ikhlas, as many times as possible. This is what you do on Jumu'ah, generally. Ramadan just makes it even better. Aital Kursi. If you recite Aital Kursi, and it's gone, from Fajr to Zohar, I mean, your memory is phenomenal. I used to have a teacher. Many of you know him. Do you know Marhum al -Asker? You You've heard about him. Okay. So he was a phenomenal person. And when I used to see him on the, on the member, I used to say, how do you remember all this? Because, I mean, he, he could remember stuff like crazy. You know, it's something that happened so many years ago. And I, how do you do it? He said, simple. I told Kursi on a Friday from Fajr to Zohar. And it's in all the books. You just got to pick it up. After Salatul Asr. Uh, what time is Asr, by the way? I said this on the first day. By praying five salawat, one salah, so many salawat. By pray, pray, praying five times a day it does not stop you from being a Shia. You know that? Okay. So after Asr, which is now, it is after Asr now, if you could do Istighfar, Astaghfirullah Rabbi, Wa Atubullah. It's not hard, even while you're sitting here. Astaghfirullah Rabbi, Wa Atubullah. These are just some of the things for Friday. But we're going to go to, um, you've got that book. We're going to go to the surah, which we're doing. Surah Tul Ala, ah, well done. Okay, surah number 87, 19 ayat. You're going to memorize it with me. It's a Maki surah. What else? Favorite surah of the Prophet. Part of the Musabbihat because it starts with Sabbih, the only surah which gives you an order of Tasbih. It says, Do Tasbih. Right? Sabbih. Okay. We went through those ayat. Let's see how much you remember. Sabbih isma rabbikal. Well, Bismillah rahman rahim. Sabbih isma rabbikal. A'la. Alladhi kalaka fasawa. Walladhi qaddara fahada. Walladhi akharajal. By smiling, it doesn't mean you know it. Come on, let's start. So you know that now. You know the five ayat. That means you finish five Qur'ans. You know that. The thawab of finishing one ayat. In the month of Ramadan, this is in the Sermon of the Prophet, you have the thawabs of finishing five whole Qur'ans. And you know these five now. You're sure. You can understand them. With the first one, you know it's subhan. With the second and third one, you know those four concepts. You remember them? Creating, khalaka, fasawa, kaddara, and fahada. And then the last two that we did yesterday was looking at the example of grazing pastures and how after those pastures are there for a certain season, they suddenly become rotten. So there is a time limit for absolutely everything. Are you good with that? So now we're going to look at the next two ayat, which is ayah 6 and ayah 7. So ayah 6 says, Sanukriuka fala tansa. Now, Sanukriuka sa in the Arabic language means in the future. Kira'a is to recite. Right? That's why you say Qur'an comes from the same word, kira'a, to be, to recite. The first word that was revealed to humanity was iqra. It was an order. Iqra, read. And it wasn't just read. That's right. It's from Surah Al-Alaq. Iqra bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq. Iqra was read, internalize, understand, apply, and 
teach. So now this was a message to the prophet where he's told, Sanukriuka, you keep on reciting this, you keep on internalizing this, you keep on understanding it, teaching it, um, and manifesting it. Fala Tansa, we will make sure you will not forget. See, as far as the prophet goes, he felt that the Quran was overwhelming. There was a lot. And he felt that maybe he would, he would have internalized it because it was revealed to his heart. But what about all these other people? Would they be able to internalize it? Would they be able to understand it? Would it remain the way it was? And this ayah is telling you that Allah looks after it. The Quran will be as it was revealed on day, the day it was revealed. So you know there's been no discrepancy in the way it is. right? So I'll go over it again. So nukriuka fala tansa. You will be able to recite it and you will not forget. Illa masha Allah. So now let's look at the subject of remembering and forgetting. In times in life, we have this wonderful gift of remembering and forgetting. You know that? So, and it'll, it'll lead on to the Asma'al Husna I want to do today. So the Prophet was told, remember two things and forget two things. Remember Allah and death a lot. Because you know you've got to do good all the time. It doesn't mean you've got to be morose. It means if you remember death, you know that you could do as much as possible as quickly as possible. Right? Forget two things. The good you've done to people and the hurt somebody's caused you. And that's really hard. You are somebody about hurt. They'll tell you generations ago, you know, my grandmother's grandmother's grandmother did this to this person. Have you heard that? We tend to not forget. And about the good we do, oh my goodness me, your children are still young. But when they grow up, and God forbid they say something, you'll say, I kept you in my stomach for nine months. And then I changed your diapers. And then I taught you how to walk, and I, and I ran after you when you were running away. I, I taught you all this, and you actually are talking back to me? You've actually forgotten what pregnancy was like. You've actually forgotten how, even how childbirth was like. You think you haven't, but you will, okay? You've actually, it was a joy, was it not, to carry those children? Isn't it a joy? Okay, come on, nod a bit, right? It's not that bad. It is, it's a joy, it's a joy to have little babies in your arms. So you're actually using that against them. Here Allah is telling you, that's not how you're supposed to do things. You're supposed to remember that, which is supposed to be remembered. And Allah does make you forget some stuff, by the way, which is good. If you remembered everything, you'd have problems. Now, in the Arabic language, mashia is a concrete decision. That's why you say, insha'Allah, masha'Allah. So Masha is a concrete decision. So here he says, he will make you remember that which he pleases. So what am I supposed to remember? I'm supposed to remember that hidayah that is relevant to me. Okay? And then he says, Innahu ya'lamul jahara wa ma yakhfa. You know what jahar is? Jahar is obvious. Can you tell me a name in Asma al-Husna? That goes with jahar. Come on. I'm going to make you wake up a little bit. What word, what name of Allah means apparent? Come on. Zahir. Yes, zahir. Zahir is apparent. It goes with jahar. And what word goes with yakfa? Straight after zahir is batin. Now, you know in, when you're reciting Quran, you say ikhfa. Do you know what ikhfa is? If you've done the rules of recitation, if you haven't, your children have done the rules of recitation. So you saw this microphone, and now I've covered it. You can't see it, but you know where it is. That is ikhfa. Do you know what the rule of ikhfa is in recitation? Oh. Look it up. It's good for you because it'll help your children. Okay? It's like that sound that you make which you cannot see but is hidden. Look it up. Okay. So here Allah says, He knows what is apparent and what is hidden. Are you good with that? Let's go back to everything that we have. We started off with Sabbaha, which was to be able to declare His perfection. We then went to the four different stages of creation, 
of making complete of the different stages and the hidayah, yes? Then we said, like yesterday, that the hidayah with the pastures and the going, uh, it going rotten was that every single hidayah is for a particular stage. So here it's telling me, and always when you want to understand an ayah, look at what, what Allah is telling you about himself. He says, إِنَّهُ يَعْلَمُ الْجَهْرَ وَمَا يَخْفَ He knows what is apparent and what is hidden. So at your particular stage of life, you're supposed to follow that which is relevant to you. How am I going to put this in a simple way? If I'm going to... Um, I'm 65 as you know. If I'm 65, it's a bit stupid to act like a 10-year-old, is it not? Or even a 20-year-old. Or even a 30-year-old, for that matter. You gotta act your age. Because he knows what is apparent and what is hidden. He knows your intention and what is not. I know these days you have Botox and gyms and I know all the rest of it. Please go to the gym, by the way. But plastic surgery and all the rest of it. But it doesn't mean you want to look like a 20-year-old. Oh my God, being 20 is a pain in the neck. Being 30 is a pain in the neck. Being 40 is a pain in the neck. Right, for you it might be lovely, but oh my goodness, don't want to go back there again. So the idea is to act your age. You've looked at your children, right? You love your children very much. Take a teenager. Have you got teenagers? Anybody? 12, 13. What's a teenager? 13, isn't it? Would you like to be a teenager? Have you seen them? They're interesting. They're very interesting. Okay, so back to this ayah. All it's trying to tell me to say, he knows my insights. He knows what is apparent. Follow that, and I'm going to cut it down into a nutshell. Follow that that is relevant to your age or to your era. Tomorrow... Not tomorrow. I'm going to see you on Monday now. We're going to look at the last two, or the last two of... Um, in this section, which is when we sirka lil yusra for dhakir in naf atith dhikra. Now I'll just mention a little bit about it. I keep on going on about the second ayah for dhakir in naf atith dhikra, which is remind. Continually remind. I told you that this surah, if you look at the focus, it's two things sabih and dhakir. And dhakir comes from this ayah, which is ayah number nine. For dhakir, continuously remind. Telling the Prophet, if you have to continuously remind. I know many people, when they come to a lecture, they'll say, but I've heard this before. But a reminder is always helpful. Inshallah, we'll do that on Monday. But going on from there, today, I'd like to look at the four Asma'ul Husna that deal with forgiveness. So have you got your chart with you, by the way? You got your chart? So I have a chart at the back of my book. I gave you an A4 chart to look at. And in your charts, you should have you should have the three R's. Do you remember what the three R's were? Rahman, Rahim, and Rauf, which was number one, number two, and eighty-three. Are you good with that? We also did Hayul Kayyum. Do you remember that? Do you know which numbers Hayul Kayyum were? Hay and Kayyum, sixty-two and sixty. Three. I call it HQ, headquarters, because all the Asma'ul Usna come from there. Are you good with that? And they're also HQ because if you look, have you heard of something called Isme A'adham? Has anybody told you about Isme A'adham? It tells you about the greatest name of Allah. Now, I've listed some. I was trying to list them today and I'll talk, talk to you about them hopefully on Monday. But maybe I've listed, if you look at all the ahadith, I have about 11 here. And I'll go over them on, um, on Monday. However, if you look at the forerunners at the top, Hayul Qayyum comes up there. Hayul Qayyum and Dhul Jalali Wal Ikram. So you know Hayul Qayyum is HQ 62 and 63. The other thing we did was number one to number nine. Do you remember the story? The Rahman and the Rahim king sent holy salams to who to the mu'min who protected himself from being aziz and jabbar and i went through each of these names so if i can ask you the first nine do you know them rahman rahim malik kudus salam mu'min muhaymin aziz and 
Jabbar. Oh my goodness, that is awesome. Okay, so we're going to look at 18 onwards later, but I'd like to look at these four, which I call the four forgiveness ones. Both begin with F, four and forgiveness. So let's first look at forgiveness first, because it's really important, especially on a Friday. Like I said, to ask for forgiveness is amazing. The first thing we've got to put into our heads before we do these names is no matter what sin you've committed, no matter how far you've grown, gone away from Allah, no place is too far for him to forgive you. I'm going to start again. Don't let anybody tell you that you are condemned to Jahannam. Don't, this, don't let anybody say, oh, no, 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 you can never find your way back. That is the word shaitan uses, not human beings and not Allah. Okay. So I know I can find my way back. One of the sentences that we continually continue to say is astaghfirullah rabbi wa atubu So first let's look at the first part, which is istighfar. Istighfar comes from ghafara. Ghafara means to cover. Mirfar is a helmet that a soldier wears. So when a soldier wears this helmet, he is protecting himself or protecting his head. Now we don't have to go to be soldiers, but if you look at anybody on a bicycle today, I'm sure your children, when they learn how to go for, for, for uh, to learn to ride a bike, you will insist that they wear a helmet. And that helmet is to protect their heads. So istighfar is not only covering up, but it's also protecting me from the consequences of my own wrongdoing. That's istighfar. You've got to understand what it means. There was a companion of the Prophet known as, do you know his name? was Abu Dhar? Ghifari, yes. Ghifar, he came from a town, he came from a community called Ghifar. And Ghifar is this protection. So I need you to understand that Istighfar is protection and it's this cover, right? Seeking protection is actually something that you don't want, you don't want the consequences of your actions coming back to you. So Istighfar is really, really important. Now there's two words, two names that we're going to look at. 14 and 34. So in your charts, 14 and 34. 14 is Ghaffar. 34 is Ghafur. 14, quite easy to remember, because you know the 14 Masumin. Ask for Istighfar using the wasila of the 14 Masumin. Ghafar means one who forgives again and again and again. Like continually forgives. Man came to the Prophet and said, Ya Rasulullah, what if I commit a sin? And then I do Istighfar. Allah will forgive you. And what if I do it again? Allah will forgive you. And then what do I do it again? Allah will forgive you. And he kept on. And the Prophet said, stop. You will get tired of committing your sin. Allah will never get tired of forgiving you. A bit like a mama. Have you seen the amount of times the children do stuffs? Do you actually say, I'm going to ban you from my house now because I told you that you're not going to do this again? You don't. Because a mom does that. A continual forgiveness. Ghaffar, she does get tired at some point of time, okay? She will. She will come to the stage and say, enough is enough, okay? But Ghaffar will never, ever, ever stop. So if you are, think, if you feel that you want to ask for repentance for something that you just can't stop, you should be stopping it, then recite Ya Ghaffar. It'll assist you to stop as well. So one of the things that we tend to do a lot is we talk a lot, right? And sometimes we say, but I just couldn't help it. Yes, you can, but we do. We like to comment on people. I call it halal gossip, but we still comment on it. We still do this talking. But if you kept on remembering Ya Ghaffar, and you're thinking every time I'm doing this, I may be hurting someone, you may not do it again, okay? Ghaffur. It's different. It's a bit more potent. That's number 34. Ghafur is one who forgives that sin which is so deeply ingrained in you that you don't want to tell anyone. Now, I will connect it to the surah we did. You know, when you have completely done istighfar, and you have sorted out whatever you had, that sin will disappear from your head. It won't come again and again and again. But that which you feel 
is bothering you a lot, it doesn't go away because it's not totally solved. In Arabic, a sin is called a thumb. You know what a thumb is? You say thumb, right? In Swahili, we say thambi. Right? Thumb is a tail. It follows you everywhere. Now, that particular thing that's bothering you, that's inside you, that's not coming out, you call upon Ya Ghafoor. It is Ya Ghafoor who will forgive you or who will aid your forgiveness into that sin. Okay? Are you good with that? However, a little bit, I'm gonna put a spanner in the works. If you've done something to somebody else, you, c you will not be able to take it out except by going to them and say, I'm sorry. I'm going to expound on this because somebody called me yesterday after this session here. So say, for example, I'm going to pick on my friend Zina because I pick on her all the time anyway, okay? So she's over there. Now say, for example, uh, Zina's bag was lying around and I took some money from Zina's bag. She's a really good friend of mine. And I also know that if I took something out of her bag, it really didn't matter. But now I'm really worried. I'm really worried. Because if I tell her I took this out of your bag, she will say, couldn't you have asked me? She won't say it to me, but she will think, couldn't you have asked me? I'd never have said no, you know that. But I took it. Now I'm going to put it back. And it's quite difficult to put back because she realized something was missing. So now she holds a bag to her to her chest. She won't even let go of it. Right? So what do I do? What do I do? Okay, I'm going to ask Ya Ghafoor for help, but I stole. And if I tell her Zina that I took something out of her bag, she'll think, God, my friend's a thief. I don't want her to think that. So what do I do? How do I resolve this? Yes, I'm asking Ya Ghafoor to help me, but I've done an injustice to her. One methodology is to be able to get her the amount of money I took or whatever I took to her. Maybe as if I was going to, if I was going to give her fifty pounds for her birthday, I'd give her a hundred. That's one way. Another way is to give Radde Mazalim. Do you know what Radde Mazalim is? Radde Mazalim is a charity you give in her name. Rad means to rub out. Mazali means injustice. I did injustice to her. So you give that charity in her name. So on the day of Qiyama, when she says, you stole from me, I say, yeah, but look, I gave 10 times more in your, on your behalf. But it's really important to put those straight. Okay, I'm going to do something a little bit more, uh, something that you may understand a little bit more. I was born in a town called Moshi. It's on the foot of Mount Kilimanjaro. And what one thing we did in Moshi, which we should do here too, if somebody didn't come to the mosque, we went to their house to see why they didn't come and how they were. And you think, oh my goodness. So people actually came because they didn't want somebody to come to your house, right? So Friday afternoon was ladies' majlis. If you didn't come and you didn't let anybody know why you didn't come, your door was going to be opened by so many different people. Now, I remember one of those days when I was about five, possibly six, and I remember going to this house and I'm thinking, oh, God, now I got to go to somebody's house. Now, you sat there totally bored out of your feet because the adults were talking. And at this house was a sofa. And in the sofa was a hole. I put my hand in the hole and I took out some of the cotton. You know the cotton? And I was playing with it. I was played with it. And then I looked at this thing and I put it in my pocket. What did I do? I stole. I stole. And for many, many years, that's five, I'm 65, 60. 60 years it's bothering me, right? Some years ago, well, about 10 years ago, when I went back to Moshi, it was still at the back of my mind. And I knocked on the door. She's a wonderful lady. And obviously she's become really old. She's bed bound. And I, she's not, what is she going to say? I said, look, I haven't been able to sleep. Every time I wake up, I have memories of this piece of cotton that I've stolen from you. And she went, it's okay, it's all right, you know. You were young, but it bothered me. It really did bother me. So every time I go for Umrah, every time I go for Ziara, guess what I do? You have to do an Umrah for her, and you have to do Ziara for her. And it's really important to understand. If it's not going from your head, it is something that is has got to be resolved. I have a son, as you know. When mobile phones, phones first came out, um, we bought them for our children. 
but they were specifically told not to take them to school. They were the little, have you seen the little banana phones and flip phones? They use them as burners these days. No, no smartphones, okay? So these tiny little things, they were really, really expensive. And I gave it to him, you will not take it to school. Guess what he did? He took it to school. And guess what happened? It got stolen. He came home and it, you know, it was crazy. All right, you could, you could tell him, you're going to wash up, you're going to clean up. These are the chores you're going to do, all the rest of it. But it was there. Um, kudos to my son. I, I'm very proud of him even until today that he, will, he knew who took it, but he will not say it at all. Some years later, and I mean some years later, we got a letter. And I've got the letter. I keep it with me because it reminds me of, my own, of myself and it tells me what to do. And the letter said, and it was addressed to him. It was a card. And it says that I stole your phone. I'm returning you the money for a smartphone that would cost today. And I've also ended up planting so many trees in Palestine so that as long as they give those dates, you will get the thawab. And I'm really sorry for that. Now, that particular person is not a thief in my eyes. In my eyes, he's the greatest of teachers because he taught me what to do if I had taken something from Someone. Now, you and I might say we don't take things from people, but we do take bits of their heart when we speak about them, when we say something nasty, when we look at them in a different way. It's really important that you go to Ya Ghafur, you do a tasbih of Ya Ghafur, and you think of all the things you want to put right. Imagine the times of times we've shouted at our kids for no reason at all. You know, in, in Gujarati, we say, Isa Nukhar Musa Upargad. And that's what we do. We get angry on the children. They're due an apology. They don't deserve it. So, yeah, Ghafoor, are you good with that? You good with Ghafar and Ghafoor? Ghafar again and again. Ghafoor, that, that thing that's bothering you all the time. Okay? But you can put it right. 14 and 34. Now we're going to look at the third one, which is Tawab. Tawab is number 80. Can you see that? Number 80 is Tawab. Astaghfirullah Rabbi. Tawab means U-turn, going back. So Tawab is in essence a U-turn. Now Quran says, Tubu ilallahi tawbatan nasua. Do a Tawbah that becomes, now some of your translations will say, a Tawbah that is a lesson for others. But nasuha also means that which will stitch you back together. When you and I do something wrong, it tears our soul apart. It literally does. And to be able to put it together, we need to stitch it up. And I mentioned to you this young man who sent this phone back. That's Tawbat and Nasuha because he teaches us what to do, right? Tawbah means literally doing a U-turn. In Surah Al-Ra'ad, Surah number 13, I 11, Allah says, He will not change the condition of a people until they change themselves. It's really important to do it. Whatever you've been doing, it doesn't matter. Now you've decided to make a U-turn, do a U-turn. Maybe I will put it a little further. There was an emperor in Japan, and he had a favorite teapot. You know how the Japanese love their tea. Have you been to Japan? Have you been to a Japanese restaurant? Please go. You'll sit on the floor. Just drinking tea will take you 40 minutes. Can you imagine? If you're in Stanmo, they'd kick you out. They'll give you a tea by five minutes and when you're out. Okay? So, but Japanese have a certain way of respecting the food they serve you. So this tea they serve. So this Jap Japanese emperor had a favorite teapot. And the person bringing his tea broke the teapot. It's many, 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 many hundreds of years ago. So what he did was he put the teapot together using gold lacquer, gold, like, you know, whatever, gold glue. Ever put it as gold glue or silver glue. And when he put it together, the teapot looked even prettier than what it was before. Even today, this thing, this art is called kintsugi. You probably heard about it. And even today, if you went to buy a normal bowl, a Japanese bowl, even normal bowl, it would cost much less than a kintsugi bowl. It's actually broken and put together 
again. Every single dua of the Prophet in the Quran is kintsugi. Because it teaches you how to put the broken bits of your heart and soul together. That is basically what tawab is about. When he says, Tubu ilallahi tawbatan nasuha. Do a tawbah that becomes such an example that people follow it. The first dua of human beings was what? Surah number seven, Surah Tula Araf. Anybody know what the dua was? The first dua of human beings wasn't help me do this, get me that, get me that. It was the dua of Prophet Adam and Sayyida Hawa. Rabba nagfirli, O our Rabb, forgive us. Watarhamna, lanakunanna min al khasirin. If you do not forgive us, we will be of those who are the losers. So before you start anything, astaghfirullah rabbi wa atubu, even before you recite this asma al husna, you praise Allah definitely. But before that, you have a salawat, then astaghfirullah rabbi wa atubu lay, and then you praise him with his names. It's really important. This is tighfar. Surah to nu Does anybody know what surah number is? Surah to nu Surah number 71. In Surah to nu let me just first go to a hadith. There's Imam Ali sitting there. And this guy comes in and says, um, Ya Ali, no, um, I don't have any children. I want children. He says, recite istighfar. Somebody else comes in and says, Business is going down, really having a problem. Imam tells him, recite istighfar. Another person comes in and he says, I've got real issues with my relationships. Recite istighfar. And when they go away, they say, Yali, same, you know, you're telling the same thing. It's like giving the same medicine to people who have so many different ailments. And he said, look at Surah Tunnu. Surah Tunnu, I, uh, I think it's 11 to something, I can't remember. 11 onwards. No, it's 10 to 12. Where Allah says, when you do istighfar, we will open the heavens for you. We will give you whatever you need. We will increase your sustenance for you. Read it. So whenever you need something before your dua, astaghfirullah rabbi wa atubule. And finally, I haven't got too much time. The last one, I said there were four. The first one was ghafar, number 14. Next one was ghafur, number 34. Next one was tawab, number 80. Now we're going to do 82 which is Afu, okay? And in Salatul Layl, 300 times you're told to say Al-Af or Al-Afu. This is 82, comes just before Rauf. Remember we talked about Rauf, right? Now Afu actually means a rubber, erases. So Afu means Allah is He who will erase all sins, so much so that you'll never see them again. A bit like um, walking on the sand in the sea, making those footprints, and then the sea comes up and takes all those, all those footprints away. Okay? Maybe I shall talk in computers. So you deleted something on your computer. Okay, on your phone. It goes into the deleted folder, doesn't it? You've deleted it. But if you went into the recently deleted, it would still be there. So you delete it again. So it goes away. So the first delete was istighfar. The second delete was Toba. But if you took your phone and computer to an expert who knew how to recover files, they would be able to recover it. Unless you reformatted your hard drive. That means you completely reformatted your phone. You know that, don't you? If you don't, you know now. Delete does not delete it. And delete, delete does not delete it either. It's delete, delete, and reformat. Okay, so delete is istighfar. Delete, delete is toba, and reformatting is afu. It will completely rub it out. Nobody will see it. Maybe I can put it in the way I put it all the time. Allah will bury it in the deepest of oceans, and he'll put a sign up which says, no fishing. Now, if I want that in my life, I will do exactly the same with my friends, with my, with my family. So, for example, if your child did something and then they did it again six months later, you say, ah, you keep on doing it all the time. You don't remind them of what they did, which you've already sorted out already. Why are you reminding them? Why are you telling them again and again? It's done. It's over. Call us. You can't bring yesterday back. Start with today. 
If you do not want him to bring your sins back, you do the same with human beings. All right, so what are the four Fs, by the way? Gafar, Gafur, Tawab, and Afu. Numbers, please. 14, 34, 80, and... Oh, my goodness. Makes my heart smile. Okay. We don't have time to do 18 or 10 to 18. We'll do that, inshallah, on Monday. But today we'll end with the Surah Al-Fatiha for all the marhumin, especially today. Today, on the day of Friday, he frees so many people from agitation, from difficulty, especially those who are your marhumin. So let's remember them and recite Surah Al-Fatiha. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Ar-Rahmanir Rahim. Maliki Yawmiddin. Iyaka Na'budu wa Iyaka Nasta'een. Ihdina Sirat Al-Mustaqeem. Sirat al الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين. صدق الله العظيم. Close your eyes if you can. Remember all the marhumin, especially those of family. Pray for those who are ill and those who are in trouble. لي خمسة أطفي بها هر الوباء الحاتمة المستفى والمرتضى وأبناهما والفاتمة. I'll try and put the eleven. Um, Ismail Adam I have on, on the WhatsApp group that you might be on. Otherwise, we'll talk about it on Monday, inshallah. Just like I'm alive.